Hi, my name is Pam Singleton. Welcome to a great another great CEO podcast. I'm here with another great CEO, Greg Kotikia of Sofion. Welcome, Greg, and thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Pam. Thanks for having me here today. Very good. In a few sentences, tell us what Sofion does. Sofion is all about innovation, and we help co uh, companies uh, take uh, their ideas and successfully commercialize them. So anything that has to do with innovation or new product development is what Sofion is all about. Terrific. Well, it I don't remember seeing lots and lots of competition on the product developments and innovation side. Is it a big market? Well, we estimated uh, the total adjustable marketplace for innovation and new product development to be ac actually about $3 billion, which is really mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, what's interesting about that, though, is it's a highly fragmented marketplace. And while there are, uh, as a result, a lot of players in it, uh, people tend to solve it in a lot of different ways. Uh, and one of the traditional ways is just trying to apply project management uh, tools and methodologies and frameworks to solve product level and innovation uh, value propositions that companies are trying to solve and mitigate the risk associated with them. But they're very different, very different approaches. Um, lots of competition out there, like a highly fragmented market. Um, how do you and, and I imagine you compete with the do it yourself market as well. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, thanks for mentioning that because the do-it-yourself marketplace tends to be the number one competitor, Pam. Mm -hmm. uh, people still try to cobble together uh, their own spreadsheets and their own databases and their SharePoint and uh, in the uh, software world, the, uh, the JIRA and Confluence tools and put that all together and try to make do, you know, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the and, and it's it can be uh, very challenging. Um, our value proposition, though, goes right to the heart of out of the box, making that process very easy, giving them, as particularly the executives that are using the system, uh, the decision support and insights about their data to make better decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, that's tremendous. That's a tremendous help for the, the companies out there that need to bring products to market. And every company needs to bring new products and services to market at some point in its life. Um, so what percentage of your revenue will recur? Um, uh, well, we are a, a highly recurring revenue business. We're, uh, as you would imagine, in a software business, uh, we value ARR. Mm -hmm. And uh, so annual recurring revenue is really important. We've transitioned over the last several years, though, uh, being a 20-year-old business from primarily a perpetual uh, traditional enterprise software company. And we've gone through that, that change where uh, now the majority of our revenue uh, is in terms of recurring revenue. Very difficult change for, uh, for software companies. Uh, we reflect, though, the marketplace that we've been in, uh, where companies, particularly the large companies that we serve, the Honeywells and 3Ms and BASFs and, oh. and others, um, you know, tend to protect their intellectual property and the information that's contained in there. And mm -hmm. so uh, uh, having highly secure, scalable, high performance environments around those, which we provide for those companies, uh, they tended to be the one of the last bastions of change from a perpetual to a SaaS type environment. Oh, congrats to you! Kudos to you for making the change. That's that's a very difficult one. It sounds like you you serve the big companies as well as the smaller companies. Well, we have traditionally served some of the world's largest brands, and uh, you know we have been in chemicals and uh, uh, consumer packaged goods and, and uh, verticals that we've done extremely well in. And we've brought that out over the years to a more horizontal. At the same time, uh, what we've brought into the marketplace over the last several years is not just for the largest organizations, but we're serving that small to medium-sized business as well. Um, we, we, we tend to look at it as, uh, as jobs to be done and what the personas that we're serving. So we're not serving just the executive doer anymore or the, or the director or VP, but the individual doer as well. So we look at it as serving the person who manages the idea, 
an ideation process, the person who is the individual product manager uh, who may be owning that product idea and set of features. And those systems need to work together, whether they're in small organizations and small departments of large companies or in actual small businesses. Um, we tend to focus in our target marketplace. We used to focus much more on just billion dollar and above. Um, but as innovation and automation of innovation processes, we now are targeting at $250 million and above organizations. I can assure you that every organization needs this one way or another. All right, let's focus on you for a bit as CEO. How many hours a week do you work and where do you spend your time? Well, I uh, I definitely spend probably, uh, you know, 60 plus hours a week. Uh, in this job, uh, I spend my time like probably like a lot of other CEOs. Um, you know, most of it is on people issue and communication issues, right? And uh, it's so important, particularly in a world. Uh, I started this job when COVID started. And matter of fact, for the first year and a year and a half, I had not met anybody that I worked with in the organization face to face. And so that was a really um, really challenging time, uh, uh, I, I'm sure, for those I was leading, but uh, for myself as well, uh, to establish the cadence, uh, to make the changes, to get the alignment when they wanted. So, um, you know, most of my work, I try to, uh, particularly in an age where uh, communication is, uh, is, is done in so many different ways. So whether a person likes to do it via uh, via Teams or Zoom or WebEx, or they want to do a texting or email or phone, God forbid, a phone. You know, actually want to have a phone call with somebody. Um, whatever way they want to communicate, I try to make sure that I'm communicating in a style that reaches that audience so that we can move uh, the company in the right direction. Very good. I, I, I forgot to ask you, um, what, what are the biggest constraints to growth in the business? Well, you know, it, it, the biggest constraints to growth are are really for for us uh, to be able to get uh, the awareness of the company itself uh, for the problem set. So many default. Uh, businesses, you know, th- there is estimated uh, that there's well over three trillion dollars spent on innovation or R and D offices throughout the world and companies of all sizes. Mm-hmm. Yet half of that is considered wasted. Ninety four percent of other CEOs are disappointed in their innovation efforts. Oh um, yet at the same time, um, you know, recognition that there. are are ways to mitigate risk and get speed and time to marketplace is uh, is something that it, uh, has has been in a lot a lot of ways ignored. Uh, Sofion uh, is well known, of course, by uh, some of the brands I mentioned. I mean, companies that are synonymous with innovation, uh, but making sure that we can uh, get that type of recognition in a broader audience. Uh, is one of our largest gating factors. So it's great to be able to be uh, talking to you uh, and let people know the Sophie on story here. Absolutely. So as any business grows as leaders, we have to shed uh, certain responsibilities to develop our people and to free ourselves up so we can focus on higher level work and, and bring them along. So name one responsibility, just one that you delegate in the last six months. Well, I am a product guy and I have spent my entire career in love with products. Uh, And, um, you know, when I started this job, I realized that uh, in order to do a a really good job for Sofion, that I had to actually give up that role of of being the chief product officer. And I was uh, very fortunate to find somebody who was much better than I'll ever be at leading product and doing product strategy so that I could focus on other areas of the business. And um, it's just a pleasure because, you know, watching somebody else do the job that you love, um, you know, if you can remove your yourself and your ego and everything else about it, you can learn a lot. You, you learn can a lot learn a lot. Good for you. Good for you. So uh, it's not always uh, easy though, Pam. It's, oh, it's hard, hard. <laughs> it's hard on the ego, undoubtedly, but um, but that could, you get a gold star for hiring someone who's presumably as good, if not better, than than you are at doing something key, something that's close, near and dear to your heart. So what what 
one or two things describe you as a leader? Well, I think uh, people say to me all the time, well, how do you get all that energy? And so uh, I, I don't think of myself as a particularly energetic person, but other people certainly see me that way. So I'll, I'll have to give it up to those who see me as a as a highly energetic person. Um, and, and, you know, I think that energy actually creates enthusiasm and motivation for others. So uh, I think when you see your leader uh, excited uh, and uh, and ready to, to jump in and make things happen. I think uh, for those that tune into that vibe, uh, they too say, wow, you know, this is fun here. And it's all part, I think, of being a part of a company that you have a sense of purpose. I mean, I walk in up and down a, a grocery aisle and I look at just in, in our consumer packaged goods, I look at products that I know we had impact on helping bring to marketplace. And you say to yourself, wow, uh, those aluminum cans, that candy bar, that next generation, we were a part of helping that company make that decision to bring that product to life. And for me, that's pretty exciting work. That is exciting work. Well, what do you do for fun besides work and besides being on the great CEO podcast? What do you do for fun? <laughs> you know, I love music. And so I, uh, I start my day probably watching music videos, listening to music. I play music. I'm not very good at it. I, was, uh, I, I wanted to be a musician when I was younger. Uh, and so uh, yeah, I play woodwinds. I play clarinet. I play saxophone. Gosh. Later in life, uh, I inherited a piano from a family member. And uh, since nobody else wanted to play it, I uh, actually took lessons. So I dabble in playing piano. Um, and so that's that's pro that's probably my my number one uh, thing that I I love besides my family, my wife and everything else is, is is music. Music, fair enough. Well, Greg, this was awesome. Thank you, great interview. Thanks for joining us, and we wish you great luck, great luck, and continued success going forward. Thank you. Yeah.